Assalamu alaikum viewers, uh, today we will be starting a new series on ISO 9001 uh, and uh, especially Krupa and uh, Narisa. This time I am recording it in English so you guys can also understand this. Uh, this particular series will be focusing on ISO 9001 standard. Uh, so those guys who are already aware of ISO 9001 standard, uh, this uh, particular series or this particular video uh, is not relevant to you so you can leave it now. Uh, after this series of ISO 9001, I have an intention to uh, work on other uh, standards uh, including ISO 14001 which is environmental management system, ISO 45001 which is occupational health and safety management system and uh, many other uh, ISO standards. So in today's session, we will not go into the details of uh, individual clauses of ISO 9001. Uh, we will rather look into the background of ISO uh, 9001 and why ISO 9001 is required in your organization and why it needs to be effectively implemented. As you are aware that ISO 9001 is a quality management system standard which is uh, published for the first time in 1987. And um, after 1987, uh, the first revision was published in 1994, then in 2000, then 2008, and uh, then 2015. So the last version of ISO 9000 uh, was published in 2015. ISO 9001 is published by ISO organization. Uh, this ISO organization was created in 1947, February 1947 more specifically. And this particular organization, international organization for standardization, uh, their main purpose is to create international standards. And they are basically having very wide range of standards at the moment. More than 27,000 standards have been uh, published by this organization um, until now. And uh, which are varying from product specifications, testings, inspections, um, quality management system, environment, health and safety, business continuity, energy management system, asset management system. So there is a wide variety of standards which are published by this organization. ISO organization was created in 1947 right after the Second World War just to create an environment of trade because after the Second World War, the world was facing serious recession and the trade was one of the basic need of that time. So uh, different countries, they sit together and they decided to create an organization which will support an international trade and bilateral relationship related to trade as well. So initially this organization started focusing on the product specifications uh, which were uh, the uh, basic need of that time because different countries were having uh, different product specifications. So the countries were facing difficulties uh, in exports and imports because if you want to export anything, uh, your specifications are different than the other country, other uh, customer which is sitting in uh, some other place, they are having different type of specifications. So if your specifications are different, their specifications are different, uh, it will not work. So that was one of the biggest trade barriers of that time. So ISO organization started working on product specifications at the beginning. At a later stage, ISO organization started focusing on management systems as well. And they started with quality management system. At that point of time, a quality management system standard was already available. There was a British standard, uh, BS 5750, and European Union, that standard was known as EN 29000. So that particular document, that particular standard was already available in the market. So what ISO organization did, ISO adopted that particular standard, BS 5750, and converted into ISO 9001. Now the question is why there was a need uh, of establishing an international standard for quality management system. You might be aware of the concept of globalization, uh, but many people believe that globalization is a natural phenomenon which is happening because of the internet, because of the uh, ease in uh, traveling um, and it is happening naturally, which is not really true. There is a planned effort to implement globalization since uh, the Second World War 1945. For the purpose of globalization, initially the GATT organization was created, General Agreement for um, uh, Tariffs and Trade. Uh, it was created in 1948, I believe. And uh, the purpose of this organization was to implement the globalization. So the countries which are participating in GATT, uh, they should basically 
reduce the trade barriers they have and they should ease uh, the business with the other countries. So almost uh, more than 100 countries, uh, they were part of In that. In 1995, uh, this uh, new organization, World Trade Organization was formed. Um, the purpose was same, but the scope of World Trade Organization was even larger than GATE. So globalization is a phenomenon which you need to accept it now because um, we are having an intentional effort to implement globalization where uh, we will be having less and less trade barriers. Uh, we will be having um, less and less control over our export duties, import duties, bans and a um, lot of restrictions uh, which many countries were having in the past. Uh, according to the latest agreements of WTO, you have to remove those restrictions, you have to ease those restrictions, you have to make your regulations, your laws in such a manner that it is not stopping the other participating members. But one of the dangers of globalization is when you open your gates for everyone, when you open your trade for everyone, when you remove all the restrictions, when you ease down the uh, trade duties, when you remove the anti-dumping duties, when you uh, change your regulations in such a manner that anybody can come and invest in, in your country, anybody can come and uh, uh, buy from your country, anybody can export anything, anybody can import anything. When you go in that particular direction, uh, definitely uh, there is a risk to your own trade, there is a risk to your own companies, there is a risk to those companies which are doing business in your your, your, your particular country. Certainly this risk is associated with the competency of uh, your organizations. If your companies uh, are competent enough to compete with the international market, uh, you will be having lesser risk. If your companies are not competent to compete with the international market, then definitely uh, the players who are more competent, uh, they will eat the players which are less competent. Yes, you are right. The rule of jungle will be applicable. The powerful will survive. So if your companies are not powerful, if your companies are not as strong, if your companies are not good in doing business, they will be wiped out from the market. So this particular concern was raised at that point of time uh, when uh, the, these organization get was trying to convince people to sign agreements for globalization or when uh, WTO uh, got the agreement from various different countries to sign the agreement, which is I think almost 130 countries have signed the WTO agreements as well uh, for globalization. So when, when they were trying to get this uh, agreement from all these countries, all these participating nations, one of the, the concern, this particular concern was raised by some of the members that our companies, our businesses are not competent to compete with the international market. And if we open our doors for everyone, if the, uh, we open our doors uh, for other countries, that will create a danger to our own companies. So solution to this problem was to bring all the companies around the world up to a certain level where they can compete with each other. And that's where the ISO 9000 was brought in. So it was decided that if ISO 9000 can be promoted and ISO 9000, which is a quality management system, uh, if it can be promoted, if it can be effectively implemented at all different countries level, uh, then all those companies which are working at different levels, they will come up to a particular level where they can compete. But the next question was, that if we implement ISO 9000, if we ask our organizations to implement ISO 9001 and improve their competencies, it will be requiring a lot of money. And we do not have that sort of money to implement ISO 9000 within our country. So to resolve this issue, the grants were provided, billions of dollars grants were provided. Uh, I remember when I started my career in 1997, uh, government of Pakistan was providing a lot of grants for uh, uh, going for ISO 9001 certification for consulting projects, they were providing grants for trainings, they were providing grants and for certification, they were providing grants and they were not providing grants from their pocket. They got these grants from IMF and World Bank and they basically signed those agreements, go, those globalization agreements based upon this commitment that they will be implementing uh, these systems in their organizations and they will bring the level of their competencies up to a certain level. So now keep in mind how important it is 
to improve the level of competency of your organization. If that level is not improved, even after implementation of ISO 9001, even after implementation of an effective quality management system, if that level is not improved, believe me, you will be eaten by these stronger players. Unfortunately, corruption played um, an important role once again in the third world countries. These grants went into the wrong hands. Uh, people got these grants and uh, they implemented the ISO 9001, but without realization that after implementation of ISO 9001, they have to improve the performance of the organization. Everybody got benefited from these grants, certification bodies, training organizations, uh, the governmental agencies and the uh, certification bodies as well. Everybody got uh, these grants. But at the end of the day, what is the level of competence of those organizations which have implemented ISO 9001? You ask this question to yourself. Have we improved our performance? Have we changed drastically after implementing ISO 9001? If the answer is yes, I would like to congratulate you because you are in the right direction and you are ready to compete with any players around the world, whatever competency they but have. But if you don't know the answer or the answer is no, I am really sorry for you because you have taken those grants, you have taken those benefits, you have implemented ISO, you are certified to it for so many years, but if this ISO is not adding value to your organization, if this ISO is not making your organization competent, I feel really sorry for you. Most of the organizations around the globe, they are not implementing ISO 9001 standard uh, for the right purpose. Uh, many of them, they are implementing it because it's a matter of prestige. Many other organizations are certified, so we should be certified. Many organizations are uh, getting certification because it's uh, uh, part of tendering requirements. If you want to participate in the tender, we need to be certified. So they are getting certified. Uh, many of them, they don't know why they are implementing because their customer uh, requires it. They are implementing it and they are getting certification. So when you really don't know the reason why you should be implementing and certifying your organization for ISO 9001, believe me, you will go in the wrong path. You will try to find a certification body which can give you the certificate even without doing the audit. Or you will find a certification body which will give you the certificate without raising any objections, without raising any non-conformities, without uh, uh, raising fingers on your quality management system. And because you are ready to pay for the certificate only without having the real management system in place, there will be a lot of different players, lot of consultants, lot of certification bodies will jump into it and they will try to steal your money. Many will come and offer you the certificate without even doing the audit. Many will do the audit, but those audits will not be the real audits. They will not be looking into the requirements and there will be certification bodies. They will look into the requirements, but they will not look into the real intention behind those requirements. So those audits will not be benefiting your organizations at all. So implementing a good quality management system is a matter of survival. You cannot just get the certificate without having a strong quality management system. This particular standard ISO 9001, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the best standards I have ever seen in any of the fields. It's a wonderful document. It's a wonderful framework for establishing a quality management system. And if you implement it effectively, believe me, you will get real benefit in your organization. But definitely, if you want to get the real benefit, you need to look behind the requirements. Most of the people around the globe, they are stuck with the requirements itself. Many a times during the audits, people ask where it is written in the standard, a specific thing they want to see in the standard. They want to see every single thing which the auditor is asking, every single thing which somebody is asking about their management system. They expect that that will be written in the document, which is not. Standard is not going in too much of detail. Standard is providing you a broader requirement and the intention behind that particular requirement is more important than the requirement itself. So if you understand the requirement, 
if you read the requirement you understand it you implement it but you don't really understand the intention behind that particular requirement believe me you are completely lost for example you know the requirement the legal requirements uh, traffic requirement that you have to wear the seat belt but if you don't realize what is the intention behind this requirement of seat belt what will happen you will not realize that this particular seat belt is for my safety so maybe this latch is not working properly but you are wearing the seat belt so you will understand that maybe this seat belt requirement is fulfilled but your safety requirement is not fulfilled you are not safe so in case of any accident that seat belt will not be able to protect you so there was a purpose of that particular seat belt similarly every single iso requirement has an intention has a purpose you don't understand the purpose of that requirement if you don't understand the intention behind that requirement believe me you will not be able to implement it effectively so my humble request to all organizations and all the ceos all the top management people not just try to focus on certification not just try to focus on implementing the requirements think about those intention behind the requirements and implement the quality management system effectively you will not only get better customer satisfaction but also it will be financially rewarding as well because the quality has a direct impact on your prof profitability if you uh, produce quality products there will be lesser complaints from the customers there will be lesser returns there will be lesser cost on uh, product non conformities there will be lesser cost on losing customers so automatically when your cost goes down and your sale remains the same or your sale increases automatically the profit goes up so keep in mind implementing iso 9001 is not only for the purpose of satisfying customer or not only for the purpose of satisfying um, other interested parties this is beneficial for you if you implement it effectively uh, definitely you should improve your profitability as well so in this series we will be going into the details of iso 9001 clauses and i will not only uh, talk about those clause requirements i will talk about the intention behind those requirements as well so you can think about your management system and you can see whether you are implementing the requirement or you are able to implement the uh, intention behind that requirement as well so we will finish our today's discussion here and in the next session we will continue with iso 9001 uh, requirements and we will go clause by clause in detail uh, in between if you have any questions any clarifications you require you can uh, ask the questions in the comments and i will try my level best to respond back to you thank you very much see you again